There's nothing quite like that feeling of excitement. You finally get a beautiful weekend. You pack you and the crew into the truck, get the boat hooked up, and head on your way only for things to go wrong. Kind of like some of the instances we'll see in this upcoming video. Welcome back, guys. It is your boy Broncos Guru, and it's this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. It occurred to me just the other day that I have not done a giveaway in a while, so let's go ahead and do one in this video. We're going to go ahead and give away a Drain Plug Mafia Tumblr to our favorite comment. All you got to do to qualify, make sure you're subscribed, hit that like button, and leave a comment below, and we will select our favorite comment and somebody's winning a Tumblr. Our first crew to make the boating news this week is going to show us what it's like when you get out on the water and have just a little bit of bad timing. Sure, many of us have heard of Hallover Inlet, but we often forget there are many other bar crossings in the world that are much more dangerous than Hallover, kind of like this one right here located in New South Wales. Here we're going to see these three fishermen were heading out for a day on the water when all of a sudden they were thrown from their boat by a six plus foot wave. The men were trying to cross the bar on the state's south coast when the wave capsized the vessel. Fortunately for these gentlemen, all three were wearing life jackets and there were surfers in the area who were quick to jump into the water and help rescue the boaters. Fortunately, nobody was severely injured in this one, just a few cuts and nicks. Our next crew to be featured in the boating news this week was not as fortunate as our first crew as they wound up being lost at sea for over 36 hours. And fortunately, by some sort of miracle, Captain Chase Cornell noticed a blip on his radar, thought it was a school of fish, and took his crew that direction only to find out it was a gentleman who'd been stuck on top of his boat after it capsized in rough seas. Captain Cornell and his crew jumped into action, rescuing the gentleman off his 18-foot boat. As the crew waited for Coast Guard to arrive, the gentleman began to tell his story, which started in Bimini in the Bahamas. There were six other people aboard this 18-foot boat which got caught in turbulent seas. The gentleman mentioned that all six of the other crew members were tossed in the water and he had not seen them since. The Coast Guard did conduct a search for the other six members of this crew, but after 140 hours did have to call off the search. This gentleman really is a very lucky person. Heading offshore without the proper equipment is always a terrible idea. Our next crew to make the boating news this week had an interesting experience. I'm not sure what that is, but that is amazing. Jeff Armstrong and his crew this past Sunday launched off the Virginia coast heading out to the Norfolk Canyon on a fishing trip when all of a sudden they spotted this unidentified flying object in the sky. At the time the crew was not 100% sure what the object was but they do mention that the object appeared to be man-made. They did come to find out later that this was actually a SpaceX launch where they launched 60 Starlink satellites from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I still have to imagine this is a little bit of a tense moment. Being offshore and just seeing something like that in the sky without a clue what it is could be a little intimidating. But this crew actually handled it pretty well and in the video they just seemed more intrigued by it than anything. It's God's path right there, ladies and gentlemen. As if the cruise ships haven't had it bad enough already, they're the next instance to make it on boating news this week as the MSC Lyrica, an MSC cruise ship, caught on fire Friday in Corfu, Greece. The fire reportedly started in one of the ship's starboard side fiberglass lifeboats on its sixth deck. The fire was quickly brought under control by the two fire brigades that were on board, along with assistance from local emergency services. There were no injuries reported among the 51 skeleton crew members who were still on board the vessel to maintain the ship while it was at port. And of course, there still are no passengers on board this ship due to the current circumstances. The initial assessment shows that there was no damage to the inside of the ship but only to the outside of the hull due to the flames and black smoke. Speaking of fires, over at Smith Mountain Lake we actually had a vessel explode with six people on board. Here you're going to see emergency services trying to push this vessel away from the marina to prevent any other further damage to other boats or the marina itself. This really is pretty crazy to watch this crew smash their boat into a fully engulfed vessel trying to get it out of the way of the marina. These images were caught by Debbie Reardon as the vessel floats out into the middle of the lake still fully engulfed engulfed in flames. The six people that were on board all successfully got off this vessel once it exploded and there was only minor injuries involved. This vessel really became fully engulfed quickly so they were a pretty lucky crew. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening in your waterways, be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and let me know and you might see your stories over here. Just like Jeff Armstrong and Ryan DeFrost did this week and if you haven't already guys go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button. Also don't forget to hit that like button below and leave a comment for your shot at winning a Drain Plug Mafia Tumblr.